Tech, can you hear me? Am I live? Awesome. So uh, thanks very much. I'm, I'm really glad to be here to address this conference, and uh, we're going we're gonna to travel down some roads here. I, I appreciate NAV uh, for coming out. I have some disagreements on whether we're scalable or not, but there's lots of work to be done. Very true with that. So I think this is the clicker here. Uh, who we are, we've been uh, working in the patch for about 20 years doing data automation work. Our principal uh, work was integrating databases from multiple systems, data from multiple sources. And of course, we built a business layer on top of that. We do a lot of automation and intelligence work now. We're using machine intelligence to read contracts. We do a lot of asset and measurement work. We work in facilities clearly around Directive 17. And more recently, we've been working in the smart contract world. So we have some very interesting people in the, in the room today, and I'm going to address a lot of them. What I wanted to really get to was, beyond all of this hype, there is an emerging model, and there are live applications today in these technologies. So we're, as I said, I went through most of this. We were founded in 2001. My partner's here. I'm going to invite everybody. I'm not going to get technical like NAV too much in the presentation, because we want to get that to the booth. We've got the people who are working on this stuff day to day. So we're hoping to drive a lot of the technical discussion to the booth, so please come visit us over there. We've worked with a lot of companies in the space, and I think uh, critically we've, we've made a lot of applications. Um, and we've worked on these applications for years, and we've ended these applications to a lot of great people and a lot of great companies. But the critical ones that I want to talk to right now is our work, our work and our focus on royalty assets. And uh, this is... This is going to be a theme throughout my presentation. We're going to move relatively quickly. As I said, hopefully we get some good dialogue at the booth. But there's some really interesting projects that we've done on this list, and these companies represent where we've done royalty asset entitlement work, either identifying royalties, managing notifications around who's, who's getting paid or who's getting underpaid. We have a long history of doing this, and I'm not going to belabor too much of these points because I'm going to go relatively quickly. But this is all fundamental work for our work in the blockchain and distributed ledger smart contract space. So I, the product I want to reference is called Royalty Studio, and we've been building it out with Prairie Sky, but this references all of that work that you saw on that last slide, which is how we actually identify assets from a spatial, how we use graph technologies, how we use analytics, and how we drive to revenue completeness from a royalty asset perspective. So let's talk about really the big problem. The big problem is dispute, and that IS is highlighted for a reason, which is most of the disputes that we arbit or are part of arbiting are inherent in the data flow. The data flow that we see in the subsystems, the data flow from the contract interpretation all the way through the life cycle of the data is challenged. All of us in oil and gas know that. The key parts of the challenge is that we interpret these contracts into different uh, systems, we have different interpretations, and sometimes the land contracts or our agreements are more sophisticated than the systems that we're coding into. So we get natural born dispute. And of course, when the IS systems and the, and the databases that are meant to reflect our operating models are broken, then our operating models in themselves can break. So we see a solution in blockchain, and again, the AI is highlighted because, like NAV, I see this convergence coming together of machine learning, machine intelligence, and distributed ledgering, smart contracting, as a key solution point as we move forward. So when I say blockchain, I really mean smart contracts. A smart contract being a program that both parties, or all counterparties to an agreement, have agreed is a consensus point, or a trusted point, a source of data, source of calculation, basically a computer program that's shared. We also mean distributed ledgers, which is how the smart contract arbits its values and how we get those values across the network, how we get all the participants in a given contracting space aligned. So a lot of, a lot of this team sport that's happening is the building of these new networks, and these distributed ledgers are the lifeblood of these new networks because they're the shared tables of data, if you will. Of course, digital assets, how are we tokenizing our assets? There's a lot of really interesting dialogue at this conference around how we're actually tokenizing, reading, measuring, recording values, and how that digitization is important. And we can't forget about cryptocurrency. There's a, there's a penchant at these conferences to not talk about Bitcoin too much because we kind of separate blockchain. To me, they're kind of one and the same in that blockchain 
enabled Bitcoin the same way as it enables all these other applications. And Bitcoin was probably the most important single use case of blockchain, clearly, to date. So we're, we're involved in all those things. We fired up a blockchain lab and an AI lab a few couple years ago to kind of uh, process this stuff. But I want to talk about our blockchain lab, and I want to talk about a, a technology called Corda. So when we started looking at what platform to use, and, and we, so we saw that ledgering was going to be an important mix for what we did in managing dispute, Corda kind of advanced forward for us because Corda is a permission chain, i.e. we don't have to publicly broadcast everything. Two, two parties who are not party to a contract do not have to share data. Critical step for us because we don't want to have all the compute on moving all the data everywhere, which a public block, block, blockchain like Bitcoin or Ethereum does. So Corda also had a couple of other key characteristics, but for our team, what was really sexy was that we could smart contract in Java languages or JVM-based languages. And Corda gave us the ability to leverage all that Java skill that we had as well. Out of the box, a couple of really important other things, like a notary node and some built-in stuff. Again, come to the booth for all that technical stuff. So energy business ledgers are coming. They're coming relatively quickly. Uh, we were at this conference in Houston in September, and little seedlings that were planted there have now turned into trees that are actually growing. So we see asset ledgering, how we keep uh, track of all these assets, how we manage the inventories of assets, how we actually share information around those assets, and what attribute data is tied to those assets. Across the scale, we see measurement ledgers. Custody transfer points is a perfect scenario for a distributed ledger if we're sharing our measurement data because we're, we're mandated and regulated to do so. And then in the middle, we have these transaction ledgers, things that can consume asset data and can consume measurement data and produce results. Really interesting one for us is royalties, of course, not least of which because of our history in the royalty world. So we launched a proof of concept of the royalty ledger at this conference in Houston last September, and we've continued to develop it every day. And again, go back to the booth. I'm going to say booth about seven times. We'll see how many, hopefully more than seven people make it. But the ledger is really the, the culmination of a lot of work that we've done with some really good partners in town. So I'm going to focus a bit on those partners and some pioneering, because I think along with kind of demystifying the hype, we need to demystify the mystery. Uh, you know, not to be redundant, but some th other things we're doing with the chain or blockchain or cryptocurrencies, we do have a mining utility. Uh, we're actually working with some uh, providers in town, actually mining cryptocurrency directly on oil and gas assets, which has been a really interesting and valuable project. We're working on software and notification interfaces to people who want to run these mining networks and operations. And now I'm going to talk about those pioneering. So when we started work on blockchain, it was very hard to now's point finding co-minded people who were at the same level of, um, I guess, digestion that we were. The belief in the system, the belief that this was going to be an important part of the future. So I met a guy named Terry Ross at the University of Calgary about two years ago. And I think Terry's done a good job at putting together an in institutional liaison. That's YY Chain. And I'm happy to serve on the board, along with some other members. Mike Brown from ATB, I see him here. He's on the board of YY Chain. The important pioneering that happened there is we started to get engagement with multiple industry players. And if there ever was a team sport, it's blockchain. Because we really need the counterparties to all be aligned and all on the same page as we move these models forward. So fast forward for that, and then we met the Imaginea people, and Terry was really, and I've got to give a big tip of my hand to, you saw NAV's slides, they're working on some stuff. I apologize if the clean hydrocarbon ecosystem token isn't out in public, but that's my understanding of, of what we're working on. I want to give a big tip of the hat to Suzanne West, who actually was very formative in pioneering the Alberta Blockchain Consortium. And this is where the industrial engagement really started to happen. We saw like-minded people getting in a room for the first time. There was a lot of Bitcoin and blockchain mashups, but this was when we started to see executive-level people, business people who are clued in, and very passionate hobbyists 
getting together and talking about how these technologies were going to impact our industry. So big tip out for Imaginea. The University of Calgary has been amazing on this in that they have dove full bore into the pool and all of these departments have ongoing active research projects in blockchain today. So that's been a very interesting. They came from last summer just talking about it and now they have actual courses and they're moving forward. All of these departments are very engaged and we're happy to be one of their industrial partners uh, working forward on some blockchain research. Uh, Olium Capital, I see Dave Bradley's here. They architected a very interesting first ICO, from my understanding, of production-backed ICO on an Ethereum token. Definitely a pioneering company. And very interesting mechanisms that they're still fighting. And one thing I'll say about Olium is they clearly were early out and experienced the banking, the regulatory, the legal, they kind of were the, the first mouse out there in terms of kind of trying to light the ecosystem up from doing something, and, and the, the community owes them a bit of an order of gratitude. Then we come to ATB Financial, and this is a progression for me. I met all of these people in a line. And uh, ATB Financial I met through work at the university and the blockchain consortia, and I was very happy to hear that an Alberta bank, so our bank in a lot of ways, People's Bank of Alberta, was so progressive was so innovative in what they were doing. Mike Brown's here, and I'm sure he'll be speaking at some point today or around. They did the first international real-time payment in blockchain to a bank in Germany, which was a, a pioneering moment. They also did uh, their, a sovereign network, which is an identity solution in, in blockchain. And they did an oil contract settlement project with IBM. So some very interesting work done by ATB. They also are part of our key announcement. So I'm going to punt a bit on the announcement because it's going to come up in the next couple of slides. But you can see on that bottom line there, ATB Financial is, is part of this rising tide that we hope will rise all the boats. And each one of these pioneers that I've listed shares, I've, I've met leadership in all of them, shares the view that blockchain distributed ledger smart contracts, this crypto wave, can rise the boats in Alberta. And I, I fundamentally believe that. I believe that our ability to carve problems into solvable things will make a difference in this new industry, and I think that difference will elevate our community. Now we, talk, we come to Prairie Sky Royalty, and I've had the great privilege of working with Prairie Sky for a few years, and when you talk about royalties, Prairie Sky is very close to the surface, of course. And we work with Prairie Sky for, for a few years now, and, and, their pre, and some of the companies they've aggregated, we work with asset identification. We do 2D, 3D spatial modeling. We've pioneered one of the largest graph databases in oil and gas with Prairie Sky, where we have all their assets and entitlements in a large graph data space. We've pioneered this, this concept of this sort of frictionless royalty, understanding from the royalty producer side where they're maybe being underpaid or not getting full value for their entitlements. And now, most recently, we've done a couple of pilot projects where we're starting to learn contracts. And we've, we've done some classification and clustering using machine learning and feeding contracts in and being able to cluster and save a lot of admin times. They're also part of our key announcement. But there's, an, there's one particular um, company that I think has, has been very pioneering and progressive with us of recently, and that's NAL Resources. Because a lot of this work is harder for the operator than it is for the royalty co. The incumbents on getting it right falls on the operator. We come around from the royalty co's, and I work for most of them, and we, we challenge the operators relative, I mean, these are all friendly fights, but you know, we're, we're into disputes about dollar values, asset lists, that kind of thing. So NAL is two things today. I wanted to free up some time, and I moved a little quickly because I wanted to give some time to an oil and gas producer who's actually doing some of this stuff. So I'm going to get to him in a minute because you'll see the key announcement again. I wanted to say that we actually last week with this business network settled the first royalty contract on blockchain in the world. We believe this is the world's first. Our blockchain partners, R3 in New York, believe this is the world's first. And this press is hitting today. So we are actually very proud to have worked with a really good group of people because again, this is the biggest team sport I've ever seen in the enterprise to do this royalty contract. In other news, and I just want to focus because it is all about pioneers 
Eric Grimson, who's a pioneer of AI in the United States and, and in the world, Chancellor of MIT, has joined our advisory board and is helping us lens these technologies into various communities around the world. So those are our two big news things. And why I wanted to kind of reference those pioneers and those key announcements together is we have some people here from that network. Of course, the network, the transaction happened on the, on the uh, February 8th at 9.15 a.m. Mountain time. We put one down the tube. We put one into the pipe. We proved out the next step, which is to scale this. And that's where me and Nav will have some friction because we fully believe our solution is scalable. We fully believe we can go. We've worked with partners to scale this. We've been working aggressively and diligently to make this happen. And we've got to thank all of these people on this board. So NAL is the operator. NAL posts volumes into this. NAL took the risk with us because the velocity of cash coming out of NAL is faster with this system than it is without the system. But they got a chance to get it right once and for all. We can shrink a 95-day dispute cycle into one day if we smart contract and move the consensus and the trust to the front end of the contract rather than after the fact. So we have Prairie Sky leadership in the room too, and Prairie Sky is probably well, if not my favorite, but one of my favorite customers of all time because how supportive they've been with us and our visions of how we can help them do their business. ATB Financial is in the room. They've helped us by clearing this payment and actually moving money to do this. So ATB's innovative team worked with us directly, and it's been a, it was a scramble a couple weeks up there just to make sure everybody was in the room. We did a couple of dummy transactions, but I'll tell you when that thing actually went through, we all threw our hats in the air. So that was a really fundamental thing for us. We have a regulator node model. There are AER people in the crowd today, and they're actually witnessing our, uh, we're actually working with them to witness and audit and write an opinion on our transaction, as well as the Alberta Securities Commission and the National Energy Board. So we want to wrap and embrace the ecosystem here because, again, this is a team sport. From a technology perspective, our, our expertise and our technology was used to do this. But also, we relied heavily on the core to build from R3, which is a banking and, and financial regulator consortia. And we stood all of this up on Amazon Web Services. One of the reasons why we can scale is because they've done a lot of good work on making scalable cloud-based solutions. So the two bottom things are sort of more simulated. We have a pricing oracle. And in the blockchain world, an oracle is how you advance third-party data into a thing. And the most important quality of an oracle is if I ask an oracle a question and it gives me an answer, say December 17th production on a given ask or price on a given uh, product, it better give me that answer every time because now these are going into immutable ledgered records. So we can make corrections like we can in a GNL, but that, that first transaction never goes away. It's there in perpetuity and it's shared by all counterparties. So it's a very interesting uh, new model that's emerged. And with that, I want to give it to, to Keith, who has been very progressive with us at NAL. And I wanted to introduce to this conference that this isn't just theoretical and vendors on stage. I wanted to give it to a real oil and gas operator who's doing some work. So I'd like to invite Keith up to take my last 10 minutes, and then we'll do questions together. So come on up, Steve. Keith. Thank you, Keith. You're going to need this, buddy. Oh, okay. Thanks. James, thanks for a great introduction. And what James failed to tell each of, each of you guys is he wanted a fat old white guy who can tell you can actually make money doing these kinds of things. <laughs> so um, I'm here to give you a little bit of that uh, insight. Um, I've been in the uh, technology business for probably about 20, 25 years. And I also serve as the chief financial officer for NAL Resources. And so what I wanted to do is, um, is walk you through a little bit of who we are, because I hear in the marketplace, because we're a private company, not everybody knows us, and hopefully build a little bit of credibility that we, we do know what we do in the, as an operator in the business. And then I want to walk you through some of the things that we've done historically, and they've actually created money. And the other piece that I want to show you is what I think this can actually lead us to and where I think we can go with this type of technology. Um, Really, uh, for us, NAL resources, based on a can oil um, um, numbers, would put NAL in the top 20 oil producers in Canada. We operate primarily in Alberta and Saskatchewan. Uh, we've got a team of about 353 people. 
and we run about $1.2 billion of assets today. So we're a credible oil and gas company, we believe, in, in uh, Calgary. I wanted to also show for you folks that uh, we are involved in all stages of oil and gas. So we're not just a service provider, we're not just a small company. We do acquire, explore, develop, produce, and process, as well as market our oil and gas in Canada. One thing I didn't talk about in the first slide was we're also owned by Manulife, which is an insurance company. And Manulife has $1 trillion of assets under management. We're one of the companies, and they own us 100%. So if you think it's difficult to get uh, new technology and changes in a normal company, in a small company, imagine being inside of an insurance organization and pioneering some of these technologies. We have to be pretty certain that we're going to be able to make these things work and we have to be pretty sure that they will actually create value for us. The piece on this slide that I wanted to highlight the most is, six years ago we came back, and this is really a strategy slide, but if you look at the bottom of the slide, you can see that technology as a strategic initiative is an imperative in our organization. And you would say to yourself, why is that so important? Well, it's important because we all know what this industry has actually done to us in the last five years. We've seen our prices erode, we've seen the value of our organizations go down, and we've had a tremendous amount of competition from renewables, as well as the environmental societies that are out there, suggesting that we need to do better and better from an environmental perspective. And I would actually agree with them. We do a great job today, so don't take that as we're not doing a good job, but I think we can do a better job. But all of that costs money, and we have to do it cheaper, better, faster, and in a much more effective way. And we believe that this type of technology will actually allow us to do that. I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that we've done. So it's not just, you know, James talking and, and it's talking about his technology. But I've been in the industry uh, at NEL since 2006. These are just three examples of things that we have been working on within the context of our business. And they're actually creating real value for us today. Today we, we've reduced, and I think uh, now if you've talked about this, Site visitations. There was a view that everybody had to visit every site every day. We looked at that. 30% of our individual operators' time were being chewed up, driving back and forth to sites. Very little value associated with that. We did what I would call very simple technology changes within the context of that. Sensors, which we've talked about, NAV talked about, electronic pump-off controllers that sit on the sites, and guess what, a video camera shows me exactly what's going on the site without having to drive to it every day. That's reduced our site visits by over 60% on approximately 400 of our wells that we actually have. And if you think about the first slide, we manage 4,300 wells. And we have, I believe, four production engineers. So to Nav's point that he made a lot earlier is, how do you look at every well, every 10 seconds, all the time? I think that's called a computer. So you need to be thinking about how that actually works and how it plays within the context of what you're doing. Uh, in 2007, we started on a process that actually eliminated all of our accounts payable. I have no accounts payable staff in my organization today. Every invoice comes in electronically, and every invoice is paid electronically. We reduced 90% of our costs associated with every individual invoice in our organization. And we have no accounts payable staff that's there today. We think that's a huge accomplishment and one that creates a, an enormous amount of efficiencies. And when you think about that in the context of what this could be with blockchain, it just adds more. The last part I want to talk to you about is we started the digitization process within the context of our organization almost 10 years ago. Every contract, every well file, every file that we have that is an electronic representation of something that we need to do in our organization, we've tried to digitize it. And when you think about this in the context of smart contracts, we've positioned ourselves well in order to take advantage of the smart contract and what it can actually do within the context of our organization. I'll get to kind of what's still coming because it's not just blockchain. It's not just distributed ledger. There are a number of technologies that I think every person in this, in this room should be thinking about because it's my belief that we will improve our productivity and our ability for people to work in this industry by two to three times what it is today. And it's my belief that we need to do that to be competitive, to actually be relevant within the context of the world that we live in today, and to make the changes that we need to make 
as it relates to the environment and the things that we have to do in this, in this country and in this world that we live in. Here's what we took a challenge on, and I'm sorry for its uh, complexity and the difficulty maybe to see it, but we have what we would believe an opportunity that we haven't seen in a long time and the ability to do something about it. And I think this was mentioned a little bit uh, in terms of what James was talking about. Our processes today start at the wellhead. They work themselves all the way through to where we get it to a marketer. Those systems today and the processes that work, they take, in some cases, up to 90 days for us to settle on. And if you look within the context of this, we're settling with regulators. We're settling with partners. We're settling with, um, uh, you know, through the banks we're settling. Uh, there's, every one of these things passes through a chain of hands and as I think James has said, there is an opportunity in every one of these cases that we make errors, we make mistakes, and my personal belief is that the velocity of money in the context of what we can do will actually increase to a point in time where we will be able to do transactions on potentially a 10-minute basis. And we will also be able to identify every molecule of oil that we produce from every reservoir in the world. And I think that's the potential that exists for us today. And I also think it, it provides us with the capacity to reduce the needs of accounting, legal, all kinds of different services that we use today and won't need into the future. Let me talk to you about our business case around the royalty ledger and where I think we're being asked to go. We believe that you can eliminate between 30 to 80 percent of the effort associated today with the work that goes on in putting royalty payments together for our royalty partners. And as James has said before, our belief is we move this chain of actions to the front. We get con confirmatory information, which is agreed by both parties, about how the calculation actually works. Because I, I don't think most people understand this, but 30 to 40 percent of the work that we do today is what we call rework, where somebody disputes it, somebody doesn't like it, somebody thinks it needs to change. This gives us the ability to move all that work to the front not to have it disputed in terms of how the calculation physically works. The one part that still remains outstanding will be the measurement component, and we know that there are always flaws and issues associated with measurement, but those things we can change. But we have a fully immutable, auditable record that we can take forward as we go. We do 30,000 calculations on royalties within the context of our organization on a monthly basis. We do 5,500 invoices per month. We do 940 remittances, and you can see that we do them both from an EFT perspective, which is where we would prefer to go. Well, actually, where we prefer to go is even further than that, but we do them on an EFT basis and the rest being on the checks. And we have 13 professionals on the accounting side that work two days a, week, uh, two days a month that basically do this for us. We think we can eliminate most of that work. That's the business case for us. And just to further that, my boss asked me, can we have all our royalty payments done by the end of the year using this process? That's what he's asking us for. We did one, we proved it can work. I think as James said, there's much to build out and there's, there's a lot of agreement between our partners and we need to talk to our partners, so I'm sorry if I'm uh, pushing my partners a little bit, but I believe there's a real opportunity here and I don't think we wanna wait around and see how it's gonna, you know, uh, you know, two or three more years for something to happen. We really think there's value here. Here's our belief, that's the beginning. There is so much more for us to actually take advantage of. As, uh, as I think has been alluded to, we think the governments and our regulators should be thinking about this. This is a natural way to get an immutable record of everything that's done within the context of our province or all the provinces in terms of what's going on. We think our partners should be looking at this because again, we think this takes away a lot of that in between stuff that we're doing, all of the work where we're checking the checkers, who check the checkers, who check the checkers, checkers. It seems crazy to me. So we want to get rid of a lot of that stuff. We have projects working with our current marketers today where we're actually looking to bring back all of their data so that we can settle with our partners and with governments in a, in a, in a faster fashion. We believe we're very close to getting a solution associated with that we believe on top of that blockchain will only help us. We look at trade vendors, and I talked to you with the, with the, in the context of what we're currently doing with our current uh, payable systems. 
We'll put blockchain on top of that. We think the settlement process will speed up. My belief is the velocity of money will continue to increase and that will create value for every person in this room. Think of our landowners. They all have royalty payments. They all have things that need to get done. Our belief is they will start transacting with us using something like this that will allow them to actually go forward and get their money quicker, faster, cheaper, and in a much more effective way. I'm going to close uh, with this slide to really give you some thoughts around more technology, and I think Nav and James have talked about some of these things. Uh, we see robotic process automation as, as key to this process, because within the context of what we do, and for those who may not be as technically savvy, think about it as a large macro. But then think about the macro actually having some intelligence that would actually allow you to do some deductive thinking associated with this. We think the machine learning is critical to what we're doing. We've actually started a program, and I think James has talked about some of the things that they're doing, where we're actually reading. We have 10,000 contracts. We're actually reading our contracts. We're teaching our contract, teaching our systems how to read a contract. Think about how many land people you have within the concept and how many interpretations of a, of a clause you're getting when you actually go through there. This is why you have disputes. There's lots of people with lots of interpretations. We're looking at smart contracts to what James has said in terms of getting an agreement about what that looks like. We're looking at artificial intelligence about how can we make better decisions? How can we take the best of the best of the best in terms of how they think and what they would do when you look at a situation or, or make a determination about how to deal with something. Those are things that we're looking at today. And the last but not least is we just think that the distributed ledger and blockchain is something that is here and is here to stay. And I'll leave you with this little note. Three and a half years ago, I started looking at blockchain. And my IT manager said, you're absolutely insane. It'll never happen in your lifetime. <laughs> it's here. It's going to happen, and it will happen faster and sooner than any of you believe it can happen. And with that, I'll leave it to questions and, and maybe James, who's a smarter guy than I am, to answer them. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> that was great. We're going to just take two questions in the interest of time. Um, go ahead. You know, why are we not seeing the Google, Apple, Microsoft type corporations or major banks as part of this yet? Are there going to be standards like AGA or CSA to monitor this technology? It's really two questions in one. But uh, well, I, I would uh, I would invite further dialogue on this. But my view is that they are part of this. Um, we've seen massive announcements from all of the large technology vendors. We've seen announcements from all of the regulators. Most of the industry groups are now moving and creating, and, and locally, that's I think 15 to 20 organizations. So I think that that question needs to be kind of contextualized a little bit. Why haven't we seen market-proven products? I think they're in the pipe, and I think they're coming. But we've seen all of the announcement wear on it. Some of them will, will be, you know, vapor. But some of them are real active things. We see now platform-based in the AI space, in the IoT space, and in the blockchain space. We see these guys responding with platform. So I, I think that is happening. You got a view on that, Keith? No, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I think what you're, you're not seeing everything that's happening above the surface. I think there will be standards that evolve through this process. I think you're seeing standards being created. I think first movers are going to have some of those advantages. But most of the players out there are involved in some way or another. Uh, you know, we haven't talked about Corda. Corda is a group of fully, you know, it's a big consortium of banks. They are creating a standard. And I think what you're going to see is that the, the software companies are also attempting to create their own standards in this context. And it's, and it's moving. It will continue to move, and it will continue to evolve. And I think Nav had a very good point at the very front of this, is that you know, we think uh, as an organization we can make it, and it's all going to stay still for a long time. This is not a technology that's going to stand still. This is viral, and it's going to move. And these standards will get created over time. They will not be dictated at the front. And that's what's very interesting about this technology. It's a democratization of the technology and the capacity. And it's really around this trust factor that we keep talking about. In less than 30 seconds, uh, take the next question. Well, thank you for uh, congratulating. Let me share that congratulation with my team at Guild One. Thank you. The team at Prairie Sky, the team at NAL, and the team at ATB. I'd like to pass that congrats to yeah. all of us. 
Uh, the transaction costs, we're modeling that. Right now, it's a, it's a minimal type of thing, but we did stage large servers. We staged enterprise level cloud response. So I don't have a dollars or watts. Watts, I think, is referencing the Bitcoin mining, cryptocurrency mining issue. I would suggest that that's not as relevant with Corda. The one thing I will tell you about this transaction in terms of cost savings is that we took a dispute cycle that can take 65 to 90 days and we had to slow it down so people could see it happen and that we could verify that it happened. These things happen instantly, right? The settlement in the banks and that, that's still stuff we're working on because we're not settling actually directly between these. We're still a bank intermediary. But we're taking 90 days down to a day or two days. And the promise is to 10 minutes, as Keith said. So thank you very much for your time. Come by the booth. I'm on a panel later. and. Uh, Let's right. go from there. Thanks right. again, Keith.